We've spoken about Forgotten Tomb a couple times on this channel, Cover Killer Nation, whether or not it be uh, one of their recent albums, either that or if it were to happen to be within uh, a list where we're mentioning perhaps one of their more classic songs or classic discs, such as Negative Megalomania or Blood and Concrete. Uh, but now we have a new one here in 2015 entitled Hurt Yourself and the Ones You Love. And before we get started talking about this seven-track, 50-plus uh, minute long album, the first thing that we need to cover is the cover. Literally, the cover. Uh, now, I understand that this is a style of music where we have uh, black metal that's influenced with a little bit of melody. There's some doom aspects in here, but it's a little bit more... Uh, prevalent that it's kind of like a melodic black metal band now. The, the Forgotten Tomb has certainly evolved over the years, so to speak. Uh, but this is a cover that really feels really cheesy, kind of corny, really dumb. I mean, if you take a look at it, you almost would expect this from like a deathcore band, either that or you would expect this from a group that's really trying to make their album covers seem as edgy as possible in order to attract attention to it and uh, attract attention to the album. I'm really not a fan, gave me a bad, bad impression going in, even though I've been following these guys for quite some time, and recently they've kind of disappointed a little bit. They've just not really released quality, you know, really memorable material. But that being said, we still need to take a look at this album. We still need to look at Hurt Yourself and The Ones You Love. And the very first thing that I can say is that Soulless Upheaval, the very first track on this album, gives me a lot of memories to songs such as Reject Existence, uh, either that or uh, uh, A Dish Best Served Cold from two consecutive albums that were just great opening tracks. This one definitely feels like it has that uh, tendency, that capability. The seven-minute runtime certainly gives uh, perhaps newcomers a little bit of a taste of what's to come. And it's a, a song that just feels very, very strong as far as uh, their most recent uh, the material has uh, what, what their most recent material has really suggested and kind of given to us. That's whenever things start to kind of turn a little bit. Uh, King of the Undesirables and Sad Dreams Come True. These are kind of corny song titles that are really being accompanied by equally kind of traditional and very. Uh, very run-of-the-mill songs from this genre. It's not until we get into the self-titled Hurt Yourself and the Ones You Love, uh, Mislead the Snakes, uh, and Dread the Sundown that we really get into some material that's a little bit uh, a little bit better, a little bit more toward what Forgotten Tomb standard should really be. These are tracks that feel like they have a little bit more uh, oomph behind them. They definitely have a lot more feeling behind them. Uh, the sinister nature of... Uh, of Dread the Sundown is one that I need to speak about specifically, uh, even though the title track itself is very well constructed and very well executed. Uh, but Dread the Sundown is a track that's really trying to, at least from what I can tell, showcase someone who is becoming insane enough that they he wishes to really destroy a individual and their family, literally from the inside out. No, I don't mean they're going to pull an inside out boy or any of that bullshit. Or no, they're not going to switch from buying CDs to going to title. Yeah, title, lossless music. The only thing you're losing and the only thing that you're going to have less of is twenty dollars a fucking month. That's a fucking ridiculous pile of bullshit. Also, pe people that are already rich can get richer. Fuck that noise. Maybe we should talk about that in a whole video about how stupid that is. But this song, for all of its edginess and for all of its real attempt to really kind of get into the mind of somebody that has uh, these kind of uh, feelings or emotions or someone who wants to do these really heinous activities, uh, it, it comes off as a bit cheesy. Uh, and that's kind of been the theme so far. It comes off as a bit forced. It, it comes off as somebody who is kind of just going through a rough time and just decides to say, you know what, fuck you, fuck your mother, I'll fuck your daughter right whenever you're watching, and then I'll fucking come right into her mouth with blood. I'm going to fucking stab you in the eye, and then I'm going to make your daughter eat your eye, and then I'm going to wait for her to shit out your eye. That way I can feed her shit that has your eye in it to you, and, and you can see where this is really going from here. I mean, it just seems like it's a bit over the top. It's a bit over dramatic. Maybe I'm softening in my old age but you would think if I was, this would really bother me, but instead I'm just listening to it like, whatever. Aside from that, the remainder of the construction of this nine minute long track is fairly decent, so this is just a minor complaint that I have about it. It feels a bit 
It, it feels a bit forced, but you know what? The funny thing about it, I'm playing devil's advocate with myself, mind you, is that people that have these feelings, that is probably exactly what goes through their minds. And who are we to call that simple-minded if they actually go out and do something like that? It's not simple-minded then, then it's a fucking tragedy. Then it's really messed the fuck up. So there you have it. Track 7 is curious to me. It's a finale. It's five minutes in length. It's entitled Swallow the Void. It has a very slow, murky tone to it. And this is a track that is an instrumental that I honestly wish that they would have gone back and transformed uh, into however long of an epic that they needed to. Whether it needed to be 12, the 14, even the 17 minutes, it didn't matter. The construction of this is very well done. It has the atmospheric tendencies, the murkiness, the real kind of disjointed feeling that you get from this track that reminds me a lot of albums such as Springtime Depression or Songs to Leave or even some of the tracks off of Negative Megalomania. This has all of that off-putting, very depressing environment that you would really want to hear from this band, and it's something that has kind of become a distant memory in albums past, uh, and it's certainly something that's missed by a lot of the longtime core faithful. This is still, for the five-minute runtime, decent enough by itself. In fact, it's awesome if you play, like, for example, if you're a gamer and you play a game that has a haunting atmosphere and this is playing, it's certainly one that fits. Or if you're just kind of you know, in the midst of a thunderstorm or in the midst of a, of a moment where things are a bit leery and you have this playing, it definitely creates a very foreboding, kind of fear-inducing atmosphere, which is a nice touch. I don't know, overall this album just feels like it's halfway decent and halfway kind of just cheesy, corny, run-of-the-mill. It's really one that feels like it strikes right down the center, and, and this is another one of those albums where I feel like they are... are doing some things that are steps in the right direction. They are evolving a bit as a band, but they're not evolving enough. There's not enough real differential here uh, to really separate it from some of the more recent output that we've gotten from these guys. So I have to give this album a 72 out of 100. Uh, the high score there is based off of Soulless Upheaval. It's based off of uh, Swallow the Void, Hurt Yourself, and The Ones You Love. Uh, the, the, the kind of bad portion of this is more so for King of the Undesirables. Sad dreams come true. Come on. Let's get some better titles in here. This is freaking ridiculous. It's like you're trying to be a fucking gothic emo asshole that wants to write black metal. What did you guys think about this album? What did you think about Hurt Yourself and the Ones that You Love by Forgotten Tomb? Uh, let me know in the comments below and we are going to talk about another new album coming up, uh, coming up next. So stay tuned.